call the repair man. He's not in yet, so we just have to take care of it ourselves. What's the problem? Well, I get the call from dispatch, and the landlord reported a phantom rider. Dead man stuck in the elevator. Apparently, he's been riding between the second and the fourth floor since around 4 a.m. this morning. Every now and again, it stops at the floor, doors open, close, and keep on moving. You should be able to stop it by using an emergency stop on the inside panel. Yeah, so we gotta do that. I figure we each take a floor, first person sees the doors open, hops on, yeah? You guys got three and four? Because I gotta see what the story is in here before we move the body. Find her. About nine this morning, I was worried about her. You have a key? Yeah, I took care of things for her while she was away. Thank you. How long do you think she's been like that? I say she's been here for a couple days. Looks like we got some serious bruising on the torso. Yeah, we're thinking somebody laid it beating on her. Yeah, I'd have to go along with that one. Need the vapor rub there, Mick? No, I'm good. Her name was Tina. She lived with her son, Jacob. He's 10. And the neighbor says the last time she saw Jacob was Friday when he came home after school. When was the last time they saw Tina here? That'd be Wednesday, when she says they came back from a trip to Disneyland. She's been watering the plants for them where they were gone. So we're dealing with a 10-year-old missing boy here? Is that the case? It looks like it. I'll get some patrol guys. We'll start knocking on doors, search the building top to bottom. Yeah, I'll get this kid's picture out there right away. OK, this is all yours, Leo. I just want to be kept informed. When you find the kid, uh, let me know, okay? Dead or alive. Was there a bounty on him? What? Oh, you said that, like that show, Dead or Alive. Steve McQueen, he was yeah. a bounty hunter? Oh, okay, I can't remember. Yeah, I know. No, there's no uh, bounty. It's just the usual salary, I think, there. I hear that uh, Flynn is uh, on the way out. Yeah. What do you hear? Well, nothing. I just wondered who was going in. Not me, I guess. Yeah, well, I figured that much. Who do you think's going in? I have the biggest idea. But they don't ask your advice? Apparently not. Hey, Winston! He's coming out of you! Okay, I'm on board! What's going on? He's stuck between two and three. He wants us to call the elevator repair guy again. Helen? Oh, my God. Did, what do you know about pianos? 88 keys and beautiful. Invented by Bartolomeo Cristofori in Florence around 1700, give or take. I don't know where to buy one. I, I, I gotta buy one for her. Gabriella wants one for her birthday. Well, I have a friend who teaches, I can ask. Really? Well, that'd be a big help. Just look at this. Um, anyway, you got a bunch of calls, several from a Henry Mars. Okay. And do I know him? He's a federal inmate. He wants to report a death in custody. Oh, yeah? A speech to the warden about it? I did, and he said, as far as he knows, the last death he had was an AIDS patient a week ago. As far as he knows, huh? Okay. I'll speak to him. Uh, what's his name again? Henry Mars. And what's the story on him? Life for killing a police officer. Right now, he's in hospital. Beautiful. And Morris Winston called. He's stuck in an elevator with a suspicious death waiting on the elevator repairman. What? So you guys are what, uh, paramedics? Body removal. We get the calls, paramedics screw up. The coroner is stuck between the second and third floor with the body. Yeah, I know this elevator. She's a bitch. So how long you figure? Hour. Hour and a half, usually. 
Jacob was in school on Friday, but he's been absent since then. One of the other children came to me and told me she'd spoken with him. Maxine! <laughs> These men are with the police. Tell them what Jacob told you on Friday at recess. He said his mom died. Okay, did he say how or when that happened? No. Did she die? Yeah, she did. Did he say anything else to you? He asked me if I knew how to get welfare. Yeah, you seem scared. Nervous or anything? Yeah, scared. I told him to call the police, but he said he couldn't. Why not? He didn't tell me. You know where he might go? No. Thanks, Maxine. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Maxine. Well, we're gonna need a list of all the kids in Jacob's class. Okay, it's in my classroom. First time I got knocked out was on one of those teeter totters. Stinky Smith got on the other end and sent me flying. I remember thinking, I've been up in the air a long time now. <laughs> Show work now. Shit. You're the coroner. You have to investigate every death in custody. Yes, but first there has to be a body, and, uh, well, nobody at the prison knows what the hell you're talking about, Mr. Mars. There is a body. Whose death in custody is it you wish to report? Me. I'm the death in custody. Right. Okay, what we'll do is we'll book you in down at the morgue, put you on the autopsy table under the knife, and then we'll talk about this later, okay? Hey, I was in an ambulance, and I died. When I woke up, I was on the way to the morgue. You were on the way to the morgue. You're pretty much sure of that, are you? Yes, I'm sure. You tend to remember little details like that. And what's your angle here? Mr. Morris, where exactly are you taking this? Well, if I was pronounced dead, then I can file a writ of habeas corpus. I had a life sentence. I died. Therefore, I served my time. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. No way are you getting a get-out-of-jail-free card on me. Do you understand that? You are mandated by law to look into this. Okay, let's just see about this now. You're a death in custody, but I'm looking at you. I can see that you're not dead. In fact, you're alive. So that pretty much covers my mandate right there. But next time that you die, I will be there and we'll just do this again, okay? Not good enough. I died and it's your responsibility to investigate and register my death. But if I don't hear from you by the end of oh, business tomorrow, I'm going to subpoena the records of your investigation. Good. Let's get it on. Tina Ingram had a record of possession and a conviction for trafficking. Now, we won't know for certain that she's a homicide until we get our results back from the pathologist. But we're moving forward on that, on the premise that she was beaten to death. Now, what we know, we know that she went to uh, California with her son, Jacob. She came home on Wednesday. Now, on Friday, Jacob was seen going to school, and he told a friend that his mother was dead. We think the mother was killed sometime Thursday night. We think, right. We also know that Jacob went to school, came home. He was seen arriving home. Now, that's the last anybody's seen or heard from him. This is Jacob right here. We had the uniforms doing a search of the apartment building and the school, community center, all the neighborhood streets and the alleys, and so far we got no luck. Okay, now you all have a list, right? That's the list of Jacob's friends from uh, sports teams and clubs. So what we're asking is that you make house visits to anybody who might have seen or heard from him, okay? All right. Let's work this thing. So you've gone up against this uh, Henry Mars before? Yes, four times. In his last petition, he managed to reverse a ruling and allow smoking in prison under Charter 12 by arguing that not being allowed to smoke yourself to death was cruel and unusual punishment. So in your opinion, what do you think? Does he have any chance to make this uh, habeas corpus play here? Well, it's a bit of a grey area. But according to the statute, um, if a prisoner is clinically dead and regains life, or if he's 
negligently declared dead and abandoned, well, in either case, the prisoner is entitled to immediate release. You kill him. Uh, Mars will probably also use Charter 7, Right to Life, and Charter 12. Well, he's been sentenced. He's going to do his time. He's going to do the whole sentence. That's it. Yes, well, he is a tenacious individual. So I guess you heard about Jimmy, uh, the fact that he's leaving, right? Yes, I've heard a rumor to that effect. I was thinking that, you know, you would probably make a very good candidate for that job yourself. Really? Well, thank you. I'm flattered. Uh, watch out for Henry Mars. He never brings a case unless he thinks he can win. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. Well, it's getting a little ripe in there. You're the landlord, right? Uh-huh. You recognize this man? No, he doesn't live in the building. So he's probably dating somebody or something, eh? You mind knocking on a few of these doors, trying to find out who he was visiting? What, what happened to him? It's like he died waiting for the repairman. How the hell do you swallow that many condoms? A broken one there is the one that killed her. If you were in her stomach, the rest were already in her bowel tract. The heroin and coke, do we know? I did a quick test, came up coke. She took a pretty bad beating. Uh-huh. Could that be what broke open the condom? It's a good possibility. She took a hard blow or blows to the stomach, hard enough to rupture the blood vessels in the area where I found the highest concentration of the drug. Yeah, so it figures then that the punches or whatever broke it open. Uh-huh. Any way of telling how long she was alive after the beating? Um, well, the bruising had time to set in, so I'd guess she was alive for at least an hour, maybe two. Anything else you can tell us? Prunes. She was trying to get things moving. I got a friend on the drug squad that says you had a relationship with Tina. I busted her for possession a couple years ago. She cooperated, so I used her as an informant now and then. I haven't seen her in four or five months. How'd she die? Looks like a beating. Any idea who her dealer was? Dig around my notebooks. I'll give you a call. Yeah, the sooner the better, thanks. If Tina was smuggling dope for somebody, they're going to start wondering where the dope is. Sooner or later, they're going to show up at her place looking for it. Yeah, we got surveillance on her door in case we get lucky that way. Unless the dealer is the one that beat her and already knows she's dead. No, in that case, he's not going to leave her laying there with coke inside. He's going to open her up right on the kitchen floor, right? Smuggling dope and ripping somebody's stomach open with a parry knife are two different things. Different class of people, in my opinion. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, uh, you're going to call us if you turn up any names we can follow up on, right? Yeah, as soon as I had a chance, get back to the office. Mr. Da Vinci. Yeah. Julie Parks. My father was the police officer that Henry Mars and his buddy shot to death 35 years ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, what can I do to help you? Now, you can start by ignoring whatever Mars has to say. How, how did you find out about this? The warden from the prison called me. I was just out there for his parole hearing, like I am every couple of years, putting a face to what he did to my family, not letting him forget. Sure. Well, if I can put your mind at ease for you, I... Yeah, I gotta investigate this, but as far as I'm concerned, Henry Mars is completely blown smoke. Yeah, well, that's what they told my mother when Mars had his sentence to hang, commuted to life. Please, Mr. Da Vinci, for my mother's sake, don't let this man out of prison. Okay. He came over here on Friday night crying. Said he wanted to hide in my garage. He was gone in the morning. Did Jacob say where he might be going? No. He slept over here before when he didn't want to sleep at home. Well, why wouldn't he want to sleep at home? His mom used to bring guys home, I guess. Strangers. Did he ever tell you about what his mom did to make money? Nope. Did she ever use him or you as a spotter? What's that? You know what I mean? You circle the block on your bike, maybe you and Jacob steer the drive-bys to her corner to score. I never did that. Really? Because I think that's what you were doing when we drove up just now. Okay, kid. Do you think you can tell me who Tina's best dope buddy was? There's a woman in the red and white house. Middle of the block. You want to know where he was? So we tell the guy he was dead. Huh? He starts to laugh. How was he when you picked him up at the, uh, at the prison? I was barely hanging on. He had a pretty massive heart attack. But halfway here, he flatlines. He flatlines. 
And you're in contact uh, with the ER the whole time? All the way. Dr. Ryman, she was on that day. Oh, yeah, Dr. Ryman, we're getting to her. Now, Dr. Ryman, she had the same uh, flat line readout on her monitor that you got in your ambulance. Right. The feed goes directly into the ER so the doctor can monitor what's happening. Right. So she, you're resuscitating, attempting to. This whole time, Dr. Ryman is also monitoring. Right, but Mars never responded. So what does she tell you at this point? Take him to the morgue. Take him to the morgue? No pronouncement of time of death or nothing like that? Well, not in those words exactly, but we don't take him to the morgue if they're alive, so... No, that's true. How many people have flatlined on you since uh, you've been working together? Since we've been working together, man? Maybe 20? 20? Well, that's quite a few. So you're, you're very confident that this guy died? Well, for about five minutes that we were confident. Uh, until he came back. Until he came back. Jake. Now, I haven't seen Tina. I haven't heard about her. What about her son, Jacob? You I know I haven't him? seen either of them. Well, Tina's dead. Somebody laid a beating on her, and her son, Jacob, has disappeared. And since you and Tina are in the same business in the same neighborhood, you might want to think about who might have done this to her and whatever might have happened to her kid. Okay, I thought about it, and I can't help you. I'm sorry. Thanks. Hey, you. Hey, kid, you know Jacob, right? Any ID on this uh, elevator guy yet? Nope. Still a phantom. Nobody in the building knew him. Hmm. What's the cause of death? Talk to Sonny. I'm not going to know what's up until I get tox results back, but I do know it's an allergic reaction of some kind. Swollen lips, hives, throat swollen shut, he suffocated. Say what? Anaphylactic shock, whether it was a spider bite or a bee sting or whatever, I don't know. I did check stomach contents and I didn't spot anything unusual, so I don't think it's anything he ate. Mm. It would help to talk to a relative or somebody close. I have to identify him before that can happen. He had a liver transplant in the last year, so he might be on a registry somewhere. I'll run the prints through the system. Maybe I'll get lucky. Otherwise, he's a John Doe with no place to go. The ER was a war zone that morning. I remember that. So, but you were in contact with the paramedics the whole way, right? Yeah, pretty much. I had a couple of cases I couldn't really step too far away from, but I knew what was happening. Okay, so what did the paramedics tell you was happening up there? They told me the man flatlined. And you could see that on your monitor in the ER, right, at the same time? Yes, the strip was reading a flat line. Okay, okay, so then what? When he didn't respond to a sternum rub, I told them to take him to the morgue. That was your pronouncement of death? Take him to the morgue? You didn't think uh, you should take a look at him yourself? I wasn't going to risk losing a patient in the ER so I could check on one who was already dead. Well, you didn't deserve a look? I mean, is that how you do things, doctor? Just ship him off to the morgue? Yeah, not unlike what you do. Excuse me? You get to a scene, paramedics tell you somebody's dead, they're the experts, so you take their word for it, and off they go to the morgue. No, there's a difference. My job is not to save them. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be a doctor. And I'm not a psychic. I can't predict if somebody is suddenly going to wake up after being dead. Right, which is exactly why it's hospital policy to have a doctor look at all DOAs when they come in to make an educated guess and we'll be waking up six feet under. Now, what about time of death? There's a question right there. Did you record a time of death, doctor? No. I take notes, and at the end of my shift, I fill in my charts with the times I pronounce. In this case, I was told that Mr. Mars was not dead, so I didn't put him down. Okay. But from now on, just for you, I will keep a list of the undead, and he can go on that one. Okay, well, doctor, just for me, I need to take a look at those notes. And now's a very good time. If you're not too busy, you will be on. Is that you got string there for laces? Yeah. I broke them the other day. Both at the same time. How often does that happen? Why don't you just take the laces from your other shoes? Then I just have to get laces for them. What's the difference? I don't know. Second day in a row. Nobody stocks brown shoelaces anymore. Everybody's wearing these uh, slip-ons or Velcro flaps or tennis shoes. You try and find brown shoelaces, you can't find them anywhere. Well, I got a good shoelace connection. I'll hook you up, get you some. There's Mario. That's him over there. 
Okay, here we go. Hey, you looking for Tina? You know, I gotta get a new pair of shoes. The leather on these is getting all worn out. Can't get a grip. I just got these here. Good soul. No shoelaces. Yeah, yeah, but you gotta be careful. You don't get gas on those, because the gas eats into the rubber, and then you're just slipping and sliding all over the place. I don't have that problem. Yeah, well, leather. Give me leather. Clinically dead and loss of life for two separate animals. Heart stops beating, you quit sucking air, you're dead, but the brain doesn't necessarily die. Shot of adrenaline, a zap of juice, and bang, you're right back to paying GST. Okay, but legally then, let's say for a transplant, the uh, definition of death would be when the brain stops functioning, right? Yeah, brain dead. Bilateral dilation, fixation of pupils, absence of all reflexes, cessation of this, that, and the rest of it, and finally no brain wave tracing. So then you're, then you're dead. Hello, welcome to my house. Okay, so now stay in Mars's case. He's in the back of the ambulance. He flatlines. They try and bring him back, and he spontaneously resurrects. He never died. He's alive, correct? Clinically and legally, he was dead. See, that's not the answer I need. I need somebody to say he never died. Sorry. Anybody asked, this conversation never took place, okay? We never had this conversation. Never was. All right. Okay. So you went to California with your mom last week? Yes. Did anybody come and visit your mom after you got back? I don't remember. Do you remember when your mom got hurt? Yeah. What happened? When I got home from the park, she was sitting down, crying, because it hurt to stand up. When was that? Thursday. Did you ask your mom how she got hurt? Yeah, but she wouldn't tell me. When did you finally realize she'd passed away? Friday. When I got up for school, she was on the floor. Didn't you think about calling 911? It wasn't allowed. Why? My mom didn't want me calling the police. Well, what if there was a fire or something? It wasn't allowed. Kids. You arrive in an ambulance, there's got to be paperwork. Since no I was dead. paperwork. Saying that you were dead, sir, because the doctor did not pronounce you dead, and it turned out in the end that you weren't dead anyway. So you have no case, OK? Case closed. What about the paramedics? I got their names. Uh, the attending physician, did you talk to her and the other staff that was there? What the hell have you been doing? Oh, well, let's just see now. OK. I spoke to the paramedics who tried to save your sorry ass, and I spoke to the doctor who mistakenly shipped you out to the morgue instead of to the hospital, and I did seize the hospital records, which you did not exist in. The only thing I didn't do, I haven't been able to get in touch with the Almighty at this point to see if you're actually knocking on heaven's door, okay? You know, I, I think you're an ex-cop who's prejudiced against me because I'm serving time for killing a cop, which I did not do, and I don't care if you believe that or not. You were tried, you were convicted, you were sentenced. Hey, you're 17. How many times you and a buddy drive down to the liquor store to get a snootful on? Please. No, I'll tell you, more than a few times. I know, because I looked you up, OK? So picture this. My buddy, he's the one that's old enough to buy the booze, so he goes in. I'm just sitting there thinking about getting drunk. Now, how the hell do I know he's going to rob the place? I don't even think he knows. Next thing, I hear shots. My buddy comes running out, screaming, move it, let's get out of here. And what did you do? Did you go in there and try and help that cop whose life was bleeding out? No, you drove that son of a bitch away. Yeah, and I've been driving that goddamn car ever since. <laughs> okay, I made a mistake. Well, what's a fair price for that? How many years should you have to pay? 20, 40, 60? Well, I say it's long enough. It's time to let me go home. Look, all I'm saying is it's not my problem. I'm a coroner. I was asked to investigate a death in custody. I did my investigation. It's now my finding that there was no death. Have a nice life. Morris? Mm -hmm. uh, the lab developed that film you found in that guy's camera. Oh, yeah. I bet you there's something in here helps me identify him. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Check it out. That guy's standing next to a car. See the license plate? Yeah. All I need to do is run those plates. Yeah, I already did that. Jacob, 
We think this is the man who came to see your mom on Thursday. Did you see him in the building when you came in from the park? He wouldn't hurt her. They were friends. Okay. The question is, did you see him in the building? No. So Winston talked to the dead elevator man's family, and it turns out he's been acting bizarre ever since his liver transplant, doing things that he'd never done before, like a uh, sudden interest in candid photographs of naked neighbors. Yeah, I heard that happen sometimes. Yeah, so uh, Winston got the name of the transplant donor's family, and he's going to go talk to them. Before? Find out if he was allergic to anything. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jimmy. I just got a call from the clerk of the Supreme Court who informs me that you're going to be getting a subpoena to appear. Me? What for? Henry Mars is petitioning for a review of your decision. He believes that you're biased. Great. Just great. When's this supposed to happen? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? 4 p.m. How does he do that? Mars found out that there was some last minute opening in the calendar and has argued that any delay is going to violate his rights under Section 12. Oh, great. You recognize the key? Sure. There's only one door that opens. Actually, we're kind of dead-ended. The dealer says he had no idea she was carrying dope, and the kid says the dealer was a friend. Who paid for the trip to California? She did. Paid cash for the tickets and the hotel. What about the boy? No, his story makes sense. Even the part about him being afraid to dial 911. Now, what, why was that? Well, she OD'd a couple times before. A kid dials up 911. She goes to emergency. By the time she comes back, she's all pissed off at him. And cops confiscated her dope. Paramedics ruined her high. You made it the house rule. Never make the call. Excellent parenting, huh? Any other leads? Well, we're still trying to chase down some of her regular customers, see what they might have heard. Okay. Are there uh, relatives care for the boy? No. Nope. They'd be placed in a foster home as soon as child welfare can place them. Ouch. This is smelling like a loser. Yeah. Hey, Hogan. You got a little research for you. Yeah? Got something? Yeah, maybe. I heard Tina was having a few with her former boyfriend, so I dropped by his place. His roommate tells me the guy just dropped dead the night before. Get out of here. Guy's dead? Yeah. He OD'd. He's down in your morgue. Shut. Anyway, the roommate gave me a statement saying the buddy admitted to beating on Tina. Thought he might have killed her. Oh, well, great. We can close this thing. Thanks. What was Corporal Hogan doing at your house? Looking for my mom. Have you ever seen him before that? A lot of times. Do you know what he and your mom talked about? He'd make her give him money and... Sometimes she'd take drugs from her. Jacob, you you saw him do this? Take stuff from your mom? I didn't see it. My mom always sent me to my room before he came. But I could hear everything. Okay. What about your trip to California? Did he come over and talk to your mom before you left? Right before we went. Jacob, you're absolutely sure you saw him at your house after your mom died? Yes. Is that why you took off and stayed at your friend's place? Okay. Thanks, Jacob. Listen, why don't you wait here while I go get your juice, okay?
10 years old, nobody's going to accept his testimony. Corporal? How are you doing? Fine. Find another witness that saw him at Tina's house. Were you working the street last week? Yeah. Do you recognize this guy? He's a cop. Did you see him around here last week? Yeah, Thursday night, over in the red and white house. I saw Tina over there, too. So $6,000 is what they want for a piano. I wouldn't spend $6,000 on a car. Did you know that Henry Marr's partner, the man who actually pulled the trigger, got out of prison 10 years ago? Apparently, no. What they're telling me is you don't want an English piano. You want a German piano. And the reason Mr. Mars didn't get out at the same time is that he refuses to take responsibility for his part in the shooting of the officer. He keeps saying that he didn't even know there was going to be a robbery. Apparently they recommend you get a German piano because the English, when they shipped the boards over and the boats, they got warped and they don't hold their tune or something. Don't you think that a man who stays in prison on principle just might be innocent? Innocent? No, I don't think so because he was there, okay? Not innocent. The man was killed and he was there. We got a witness says Tina was here on Thursday. Okay, then I guess she was. What about Hogan? We got a witness says he was skimming from you. Really, I wouldn't know anything about that. What do you know? Look, I'm in a bit of a tough position here, you know? You guys are cops. You're asking me about another cop. I mean, I, I kind of need some idea, like, where I sit. This is a homicide. If Hogan was involved, we'll put him away. He doesn't have to know you told us anything. We can almost say you weren't helpful, right? I don't know. Well, we can always play it the other way. You don't help us out. We're going to tell everybody you did. It's up to you. Tina was here Thursday. Was Hogan, too? Yeah. Waiting for the dope to drop. Only she was constipated. He thought she was holding out on him, you know, trying to short him, lose a bag, whatever. So he pushes her around a little. Where'd he hit her? In the stomach. She said, don't hit her in the face. We put up the money for the trip. He did. So he was setting up the score. Uh-huh. OK, now we're going to need a statement to that effect, everything you just told us. So how long is this going to take for you guys to arrest him? A day or so, get our ducks in a row. OK, then take me with you, OK, because I don't want him showing up here. Are you expecting him here? Yeah. He's got a score, doesn't he? I mean, just because he's a cop doesn't mean he doesn't get dope sick, just like the rest of us. He's yours. Yeah, you didn't know that? Besides the paramedics and the doctor, I also spoke to one of my pathologists and I also spoke to the Crown Counsel. It's my opinion that this is not a coroner's case. Now, all my uh, notes on those meetings and the statements from the individuals involved are in the brief room. Yes, I've looked at them, but there does seem to be one thing missing, and that's the pronouncement of death by the doctor. The doctor didn't pronounce because Mr. Mars didn't actually die. Well, it seems to me Mr. Mars did die, and I'm afraid it begs the question of how long a person is dead before the coroner recognizes that he is dead. My lady, a man is dead when he uh, actually stays dead. Mr. Mars was legally, and to the best of our knowledge, clinically dead. And I'm afraid the fact that you ignored that evidence does lead the court to suspect bias. Bias? M Milady, bias and common sense are two completely different things. All right, it's clearly Mr. Mars' agenda to have me record his death so he can obtain a writ of habeas corpus and appeal to be released. What Mr. Mars does with his death registration is not the issue. But, uh, Milady, common sense would... I mean, he's actually sitting here in your chambers. This man is not dead. Unfortunately, common sense and the law are also two different things. Mr. Mars, do you have anything to add? Milady, I'm... Uh... I'm no longer that kid that went to prison all those years ago, you know. I'm 55 years old doing a life bit. I died in prison once. I don't want to do another life bit and die in prison a second time. Thank you. All right, after listening to your testimony and looking over the briefs, it's my finding that the coroner, Mr. Da Vinci, pursued his mandate but has erred in his judgment. Mr. Mars clearly died, and nowhere, Mr. Da Vinci, does your mandate state how long a person has to be dead for the death to be registered. 
Therefore, it is the ruling of this court that the coroner, Mr. Da Vinci, must register the death of Mr. Mars, and I direct him to do so. This court is now adjourned. the original owner of the liver, allergic to peanuts. And our elevator man inherited the allergy along with the liver? I don't think that's plausible. Well, that's a theory going around anyway. Oh, yeah. Give me an example. All right. An example. For example, our deceased. Before the transplant, he was, by all accounts, normal. After the transplant, he takes up photographing naked neighbors. And we're blaming that on the liver. <laughs> what do you think he was doing on the roof when he popped the fatal peanut? What, he gets a liver transplant and suddenly he becomes a peeping Tom? Sounds like an excuse. Honey, it wasn't me, it was my transplant acting up. I don't think so. I think he was a peeper in the first place and developed an allergy to peanuts. Think about it. If you inherited the characteristics of your donor, you'd basically be creating a new person with every transplant. That's the Frankenstein story. Scares the hell out of me. Hey, Mick. Hey, your wife's waiting for you. Yeah? Thanks, Pete. Hey, Kimmy. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Um, I'm sorry to have to bother you at work like this, you know? No, that, that, that's okay. What's up? I, I got a job interview tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a receptionist position at a lawyer's office. Okay. He's, he's a really nice guy. The lawyer, I mean. Yeah, I met him socially. Uh -huh. Um, thing is, I need a suit or something, you know, to make a good impression. Yeah. Um, I'd hate to go in there and have him think that I'm broke and desperate, you know, the same pair of shoes and... Well, you could go in there and tell him I'm broke and desperate, lay it off on me, then it's not on you. It's embarrassing for me to have to come to you like this. I know. Believe me, if there's any other way, I... I'd like to help you, Kim. I just, uh... Maybe talk to me at the end of the month. I, I don't have it right now. Okay. All right. I understand. You know, I, I had to, you know, try. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah thanks anyway. Oh. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. So, did you do it? Did you register my death? No, not yet. Fine. Just don't expect any help from me if you go to jail for contempt. I didn't say I wasn't gonna register. I just said I hadn't got around to it yet. I thought it better to stop by here and explain to you what it's gonna mean when I do register it. I already know what's gonna happen. I finally get the hell out of prison. When I register your death, that means officially at that point, you are a dead man. Which means no birth certificate. Forget applying, they are not going to give it to you. Without that, no social insurance number, which automatically means no job, unless, of course, you plan on robbing people again. You can't get a bank account, no pension, no health insurance, no place to live. Yeah, and no parole board, no halfway house, and no record. That's a clean slate. And I'm a free man.
I help you? Oh, um, is this your car? Yeah. Is there a problem? I'm really sorry. I scratched it as I was pulling out. I, I guess I got a little distracted and... Uh, oh! It's nothing. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have even noticed it. Please don't worry about it. Well, maybe we should swap numbers. I mean, I'd hate for you to feel differently later and... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a card here, so... Oh, I, I don't have a card, but I'm Kim Leary. Any relation to Mick Leary? Yeah, he's my husband. No kidding. Wow. How about that? How, how do you know Mick? We work together sometimes. I'm a pathologist. Oh, right. Sure. Um, well, listen, again, I'm sorry about the scratch. No, no problem. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Have a good evening. You too. Yeah. You're gonna be across the water now, eh? Yup. Maybe a few miles between us will get along a little better. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard anything from the Attorney General as regards the job, in case you're wondering. I wasn't wondering. You've done some good work here, Dominic. You too, Jimmy. You going to the bar? Yeah, absolutely. I just gotta finish up one or two things. I'm putting on my jacket and I'm right behind you. 